Bob will have uh, 256 tribes in Papua. It's very many tribes. And work with local NGOs focused to environment because the, the situation in Papua so much uh, problems about not resource, the human rights abuses, the river, land, forest, every, about everywhere. In Indonesia, uh, we have a problem because indigenous people in Papua fight for freedom. And another uh, indigenous in another place in Indonesia, they fight for how they can uh, manage their natural resources. And indigenous in Papua I think if they have a uh, freedom, they can uh, have uh, power for uh, manage their natural resources. The people want justice. The people want to free for the access the yeah, access the land, access the, the forest, water, river. Well, uh, Burma is a multi-ethnic country uh, and then founded as, uh, in 1947 at the Panglong Conference where all ethnic minority come together and uh, found the unions on the, uh, the, 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 on the principles of equality, democracy and self-determination. But the military government came to power and then destroyed our constitutions and then all our rights is uh, abolished. And since then, uh, we have been in 50 years of civil war and we are fighting for our freedom, we are fighting for our uh, self-determination, uh, autonomous status in our homeland. And uh, the, the main problem that we are facing in our country is that uh, since uh, the military came to power, uh, our language, ethnic languages are not allowed to study at school, not allowed to uh, use as a public language in the officials' uh, 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 government uh, functions and then uh, they promulgated also Buddhism as a state religion so all minority religions like Christian Muslim are suffering and then especially I come from the Chin state where uh, Christi uh, we the Chin are uh, Christian and then religious persecution is going on in the Chin state so this is uh, the situation that we are facing uh, apart from civil war we don't have any freedom at all uh, we don't have uh, uh, we don't have uh, no language right, uh, no uh, religious freedom, no f uh, freedom of expressions and so on. So that's the, the situation. But despite of all this uh, suffering and uh, problems, we are aiming to change our country through peaceful means, through negotiated settlements. Uh, we are uh, demanding, uh, according to the United Nations General Assembly resolution, which was passed in 1994, United Nations General Assembly has passed a resolution which called for tripartite dialogue. Tripartite dialogue means military government, uh, NLD, uh, the winner of 1990 elections, and then ethnic groups come together and solve the problems through uh, peaceful means, through uh, set, uh, through peaceful means, uh, through uh, a negotiated settlement. This is what we're demanding for, and then we would like to see our country um, peaceful nations where all the ethnic groups, all religious groups, all the uh, dialect groups are living peacefully together. This is what we are aiming for, and then where we indigenous people can have our own right, can enjoy in our homeland, and then develop our homeland, promote our culture and protect our language and so on. This is what we want, but right now we can do. 
but we can do almost nothing because of military regimes. This separability that is, I mean, the, we, we were inseparable, the nature and we, was, you know, just part of a single thing, single being. But now, because of certain laws by the mainland lawmakers, so-called modern lawmakers, who, without understanding our way of life, have started demarcating that this is yours and this is not yours. Uh, if we try to even take a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, some wood from the jungle, we are uh, sort of, uh, we are made to find to the government wherein when we say that it is, it is me only that I am carrying myself, it is my own self, I, I have no right. It does not have no right, but we belong to each other. So how can you demarcate between myself, between my left portion or the right portion? So it is uh, one of uh, the mistakes that the government has been doing and that the modernity has been doing to us. The gist of the work would be a battle, a perpetual battle uh, in the history of all the societies in these times and that is about the, the, the battle of the modernity and the traditions. Uh, to make it more uh, uh, easier to understand, like one of our works, there is to understand uh, this modernity versus traditions in our work there in India is the case of the Adivasis, that is the tribal people out there, and the, and the kind of violence and kind of uh, exploitation going on there. <clears throat> uh, we had said it, see it as not just a physical sort of exploitation of the people out there, but all the surroundings of the Adivasis, like their, uh, their, not exactly the rights, but it is their own self, their, their tree, their own surroundings, their minerals, their jungles, uh, their forests, their rivers. Uh, though we not being, I am not an Adivasi, but still I can relate myself uh, with the pain that they are undergoing and the wounds and the ultimate sufferer will always be the modernity. For all the uh, determinations to which you have a right, if all these determinations come from the modern setup, then for them to be given rights to <laughs> those things is something to be given rights to things which they don't want them, which are foreign to them. So it is a complicated issue. But uh, the main substance you can understand also like this, that if, if they don't believe that uh, pe uh, some document where is written something can uh, give you right to <laughs> use the land, how, how they can then um, fit themselves inside such a system where all uh, rights come through from the, what is written into papers? <laughs> because if they feel that their uh, rights and responsibility towards the land or forest is coming from their relation to the land and forest and not from some paper which is <laughs> written in some parliament, then they can't really fight for their rights in such a system because they don't believe that uh, your rights could come from some pa piece of paper <laughs> written something, some land ownership document or uh, some law concerning land ownership or whatever. If they don't believe that such piece of pa piece of paper would give you right to the land, how they can fight for their rights inside the <laughs> modern system. And so this is uh, the issue that the understanding of rights as a kind of administrative control that we have uh, documented law and, uh, and uh, documented ownership do uh, agreement or something. Uh, if, if, if people who feel that uh, this is not a real so source of justice, uh, this pieces of paper, and it is not a re real, really your source, 
source of your relation to land or forest, then uh, they can't uh, proceed to fight for their rights in such a framework. I think that uh, as such it is good uh, that uh, we have rights-based approach and uh, we going to strengthen these uh, rights. But at the same time we should somehow make a much more amplified uh, uh, understanding and uh, try to create more space uh, to the modern legislation to uh, recognize that there are uh, levels of justice which, which just doesn't fit in, 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 in this modern structure and we should try to create our kind of uh, uh, spaces for these other dimensions of justice. But it is not certainly an easy thing. Uh, it is a long uh, process which needs a lot of cultural uh, uh, how to say emancipation for, for the uh, other cultures than the dominating culture uh, but, and uh, it, it needs uh, a kind of recognition from the modern system that uh, that we are we have been the troublemakers in the earth up on the earth and uh, others much less uh, we have produced the produced the global crisis and our way of administration and legislation have produced the global crisis and, and so we should rather try to learn from those uh, other ways of understanding the justice of the globe and, uh, and so here I think that uh, we should start to recognize uh, the indigenous ways of understanding and using the environment something which, which is more secure than our uh, modern uh, administrative understanding and structure. Till when the Finland got independence, three-fourths of the Finnish people were, did not own anything. And they created such kind of rule here when this people this uh, country became almost completely agriculture besides Lapland. And they created such kind of rule that these uh, landless workers did not have uh, any permission to move uh, from the village. They had to stay there. They owned nothing, uh, they had to stay there. They became kind of slaves of this land. <laughs> तो वहाँ पे उन लोग हैं उन लोग भी और हम लोग चाह रहे हैं कि हमारी जो संस्कृति है इसको We have Sami tribals here. We also have the Gond tribals in India. And just as uh, uh, the Sami tribals should be given all their traditional rights, so we also want that the Gond tribals in India should be given all their rights. At one time. Though we used to roam around the forests and our plains and our mountains in loincloths, yet there was no hunger, no starvation and no loss of freedom. Today we may be wearing different and better clothes, but today there is no freedom, it has been snatched away, there is hunger, there is poverty, there is starvation. We want all our traditional and customary rights over our collective communally owned property of forest, land and water to be restored back to us. The main issue in Bastar, uh, which is the largest tribal region in India, the largest Adivasi region, is the presence of three actors and uh, the power conflict between them. The first actor, of course, is the Indian state. Uh, the second actor are the armed Maoist guerrillas. They are fighting almost at a, a, a small time war level, fighting each other uh, to establish their respective uh, ideological or militaristic or market hegemonies. Uh, now the victim in this fight is the tribal. He is caught in the crossfire and in order to defend himself his 
culture, his past, his identity, his world, his self-image, his worldview. He has to fight both of them now. Uh, he's fighting the Indian state, he's fighting the guerrillas. There's a third actor who is not easily visible, who is subtle, and the third actor is, unlike the Indian state and the guerrillas, the third actor is global in its reach and nature, and that is the civil society. The Indian state has failed to deliver justice, development, welfare to the tribals. The Indian political mainstreams, uh, non-state political mainstreams have also failed in various ways. But the damage has still not been conclusive, even though they may have wanted to damage conclusively the Adivasis. The conclusive damage is coming from the civil society. The kinds of worldviews and perceptions it is generating and very insidiously, subtly forcing on the Adivasis, that will spell the death knell uh, and, and from there, there will be no reverse gear for the tribals. Mm -hmm. they, they, they would become a part of the system which, they had, which the state could not make them, which the guerrillas could not make them. But the civil society, through its sheer power of global outreach, and minded the, 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 both the Indian state and the guerrillas, get their nurturance from the Indian civil society and the larger global civil society. The uh, foundation uh, uh, or the preparation to, to, to resist this onslaught is not uh, very, very much because in Bastar, out of the several clans, only two clans are the soldier type. Mm -hmm. The other clans do not have in their ethos to wage wars, to indulge in violence for long. Hmm? Uh, so in that respect, uh, the mental equipment required, the physical equipment required, uh, the, the, the tribals are, are, are lacking in them. Uh, so I, I do not think they can win this struggle. They have no backers. Whereas the Indian state and the guerrillas have backers in the global civil society. The global civil society is unified in backing the notion of statehood, the notion of warfare, the notion of violence, and it is in this respect that the Indian state and the guerrillas have a common source of uh, nurturance. There is an enormous similarity between state powers and the activist world in India. Uh, and that similarity is that both these forces want to change the tribal. They remind me also of the earlier Christian missionaries or the Hindu missionaries. All of them want the tribal to change their worldview, their perceptions, their notions of past, of present, of of village, of being located within a village and not transgressing that limit of the village. In that respect, all these actors, the religious uh, uh, forces, uh, the state forces and the activist forces, they converge on this point. slowly like climbing a mountain everything is protecting uh, 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 towards the, 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 the nature and the, the ecosystem of the, uh, existing together but now here comes people who look at the trees and they say oh this is a lot of timber I, I want to sell and this is what a, the, the problem that our communities have been uh, facing a forester is brought there because some good people have preserved the forest out of their own culture and now government they say this is something good. And they don't care about those people who are doing it. And then they say, okay, we want this forest to remain. So we are taking our, because they want to take the pride that it is them. But everything that government ever did is gone. 
So they, because now at this time, it's still a forest. They drain the forest again. And immediately after two months, the forest lorries are getting the forest. With a, with a stamp that is given permission by the, the officer. And uh, some are going for firewood. Some are going for posts. Some are, are felling trees for different reasons. And the forest is receiving money from different people from the cities. And then the community is crying. They say, our forest is crying now. It's bleeding. The trees are bleeding. It's, so they wake up, demonstrate, go to the maybe provincial, the DC, so this and climb. What is happening? We don't want the forest that. And sometimes they threaten to kill him. And then all of a sudden, when the forest is gone, then the forest is safe again. So this is the struggle that we are in. And that we don't want a forester because the, the time we had the forester, he destroyed the forest. So we, we need the, the people themselves are taking care of the forest. The problem is the forest still belongs to the government. This is still gazetted as government forest. We talking on two level, how to changing in the political economic policy and how we struggling in the field area. Of course, we Pia Campesina and the FSPI organization, we choice as direct action is the, our uh, strategy, how we struggle, how to the occupy lands and forests as the, our right, and how we protect the, our seed, and how we build our the food sovereignty and uh, local area. We cannot say that uh, indigenous communities can live in exclusive zones, like say we are staying in this forest and everybody is out. We are already so much in the mix. But then we need this system of laws that govern us, as uh, govern our relationships. And that means uh, we, we must, uh, one, uh, ratify existing conventions that recognize the rights of local communities, e.g. the ILO 169. And then at the same time, when we, when, we make, when we make other policy decisions, like the World Bank Operation Policy Number 4, we must, not, we must give communities the power to decide what they want in their areas, not consult with them, as that operational policy says. The anomaly, the development project, um, it's a top-down decision. So really the local people don't have the voice in the processing, like planning process. That means truly the project already on the way. I mean, actually it's been decided, but then you know, they have some meeting with the people to talk about what's going, what's going on and consider its participation. For really truly participation, um, local people supposed to know everything related to their life before the decision will be made for the projects. Um, truly, we don't have such kind of thing right now. Vietnam's have many rivers, and they have planned to develop many dams all over the country. And every single dam they have to displace people. So hundreds of thousands of people have to displace. Well, most of them are ethnic people, uh, people live you know, in the mountains, uh, along the rivers. So their lives really are attached to the rivers. And because the land is very limited, so people have to move to a place where there's no rivers. So all the like, activity like, attached to the river, like fishing, or uh, you know, um, along the river, gardening, the all you know, stop. And they have to learn a new thing in a new place.